This is the Mike LaPetri Show. What's up, guys? The good, the bad, the ugly June edition. This is going to be great. We got the manufacturing boom all across the U.S., but New York needs to get on board. We got the bad. Troubled economic times for New York, $36 billion deficit and $11 billion unemployment insurance fraud. And then we got the ugly, the tale of two presidents, the whistleblower testimony of the Biden corruption. Get ready, ladies and gentlemen. So here we go. Let's start it off with the good. We got the manufacturing boom all across the United States, but New York needs to get on board. According to Bloomberg, look at this graph that Bloomberg posted. Construction spending by manufacturers in the United States has more than doubled in the past year, reaching an annual rate of almost $190 billion in April, which is amazing. This graph will show. I mean, look at that 2020 number where it's looking like, what, 75 billion or so, then just skyrockets to 200 billion in 2023. That's what we want to see. We want to see that where it's homegrown United States manufacturers, companies giving jobs to law-abiding residents all across the United States. We want homegrown businesses right here, right now. And I love to see that. For example, we got Intel Corp is investing about 20 billion to build a chip fabrication plant in Ohio, and Ford Motor Co has broke ground just last year on a Tennessee factory that'll make electric trucks. So that's solid. That's what I want to see. It's innovating. It's next generation. That's that type of technology we want to see, and that's entrepreneurial spirit that we're now uh, persuading and uh, bolstering, So, which is great. Here's the problem, though. Here's the problem. Most regions of the United States are benefiting from the fruits of the surge in manufacturing. However, what's struggling? Where is struggling? Well, none other than the Northeast, baby, New York. New York is struggling still. Why? Because this is the part, this is the part of the country where spending has declined over the past year. As real estate development, for example, is virtually non-existent, as you guys know in the real estate market, it's at standstill. You got sellers, there's no, there's no uh, growth in development, so therefore you have no inventory, so that's low. And then you have the same amount of buyers, so they're all fighting each other for the low inventory. So there's no growth in inventory, the interest rates have created a, uh, a drop in buyers. So it's really a standstill with those, those people in the real estate market. And that's why we need to be focusing on manufacturing. And manufacturing, for those that know, is big on Long Island. It is big on Long Island. I mean, for example, this is something that I love this fact. The Long Island Innovation Park at Hop Hog, for example, is the largest innovation park in the Northeast with over 55,000 employees, 1,300 companies, and an economic output of over $13 billion with a B. That's right, billion dollars. That's the people who should get more help. That's the people who should get more money. That's the people where we should be persuading businesses to come here and be a part of Long Island, be in New York State, to build the business in New York State, to grow jobs in New York State, to, to produce and output a production of money for residents and communities in New York State on Long Island. That's what we need. That's what we're going to focus on. The bad. Let's get to the bad now, all right? Troubled economic times for New York. $36 billion deficit by 2025 and $11 billion in unemployment insurance fraud. This isn't being talked about enough, and it needs to be talked about because this is going to be a problem for our children and our grandchildren in the future, in the next coming decade. All right, gear up, get ready. New York State is projected to have deficits totaling $36 billion by 2025, worsened by a $5 billion reduction in projected tax revenues. What does that mean? That means people are leaving and they're not spending anymore and you're not collecting their income tax revenue. You're not collecting their sales tax revenue, any of that because they're leaving. Why? Because business here is tough. I just talked to you right before about how we need manufacturing. This is a big trouble is that we are bottom of the barrel when it comes to economic outlook, when it comes to business friendly environment, when it comes to tax uh, tax percentage on income. All that, we are bottom of the barrel in New York State. That's a big issue, and that's pushing people away. So that's why you're seeing a $5 billion reduction in projected tax revenues. Crazy spending, crazy spending and a mass population exodus does not bode well for New York State, ladies and gentlemen. Be aware. Be aware of what's going to happen. Ready? In the next coming years, you're going to see the state to try to make up and finagle the $36 billion deficit that we have to make up over the next three years. You're going to see more services and burdens pushed to counties and towns. So if you see your county and town taxes go up, that's because the state is pushing more of those services. Rather than focusing on waste, fraud, efficient services, 
anything of the sort, bloated, right, inflated government. Rather than that, folks on those uh, ventricles, instead, you have a word to push those problems onto others and make it their problem, right? Make it their business. And they're going to do that because they want to sabotage Long Island. That's the ultimate goal. So bear in mind, watch that for the next coming future. And that leads me to the next point about this. I just talked to you about waste, fraud, and abuse, right? And people are going to say, oh, there's no waste, fraud, and abuse. Want to bet? Want to bet? Watch this. For example, New York State has reported losing $11 billion, with a B, in unemployment insurance fraud from 2020 to the 2021 fiscal year. That's one year. One year, the New York State Democratic Comptroll identified and said this could have been prevented if we had efficient oversight, if we had secure oversight, which we don't in New York State. And as a result of that, New York just handed out money, 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 money. So we have a $36 billion deficit, but add that on $11 billion in unemployment insurance fraud. And we just got saddled with another $2.6 billion in bonuses that they're applying to healthcare workers that New York State thought half of that was going to get bailed out by the federal government. That ain't looking like the case, ladies and gentlemen. So get ready. We're in for a whirlwind for our economic times, both in New York State and New York City. And that affects Long Island both because you have poor fiscal management, poor government oversight, poor government security. As a result of that, who gets harmed? Who gets hurt? We do. We do. That's you and me, right? because we got some BS going on, we get harmed. That's wrong, and that's, that's just, for me, it's pathetic. All right, leads me to the last one, the last one for June recap, the ugly, the tale of two presidents, man. You look at the whistleblower testimony of Biden corruption, Biden family corruption, wow. This is like insane. If this was a Republican president, people would be bananas. If this was like anybody, anybody in the, with an R next to their name, I'm telling you, the media would be saying resignation, impeachment. They'd be pushing the Senate for conviction, whole host of things. Why? Let me lay it down, okay? Look at this. Check this out. According to the New York Post, according to the New York Post, two IRS whistleblowers told Congress in closed-door testimony in June that the Justice Department waged a cover-up in the tax fraud investigation of Hunter Biden, revealing stunning details of alleged interference and new evidence indicating President Biden was involved in his son's foreign dealings. Okay, let's break this down. I actually went through the whistleblower testimony of Gary Shapley. He's an IRS uh, whistleblower agent, and he was someone that was tasked with overseeing the Hunter Biden investigation for years, for years. And according to his testimony, this is insane. Said this. Check this out. From Shapley's testimony, this is what he said. Check this out. In this country, we believe in the rule of law, and that applies to everyone. There is not a two-track justice system depending on who you are and who you're connected to. But the criminal tax investigation of Hunter Biden, led by the United States Attorney's Office for the District of Delaware, has been handled differently than any investigation I've ever been a part of for the past 14 years of my IRS service. That's just laying the groundwork, like gear up, we're in for it. Here's his quote. This is, this is all his testimony. This is his allegations, right? And this is something that, under oath, he's saying to, to closed-door members, the investigation into Hunter Biden, codenamed Sportsman, was first opened in November 2018 as an offshoot of investigation the IRS was conducting into a foreign-based amateur online pornography platform. Side note, just for all you to know, Hunter Biden, as part of all these investigations and his tax evasions, his tax cheat, he wrote off payments, check this out, to OnlyFans and prostitutes, labeling them as business deductions from his fake law firm that was a shell corporation. So just to evade illegal monies that were wired to him, that's how he tried to finagle his deductions, therefore he didn't have to pay taxes on it, which is utter bull, right? Let's continue. The special agent developed the investigative lead and was signed to be the original case agent. In October of 2019, the FBI became aware that a repair shop had a laptop allegedly belonging to Hunter Biden and that the laptop might contain evidence of a crime. The FBI verified its authenticity in November of 2019, which, by the way, remember, by the election in November of 2020, everyone was saying it's, a, it's fraud, Russian disinformation. FBI knew about that and verified it a year before. Think about that, okay? So the FBI verified its authenticity in November of 2019 by matching the device number against Hunter Biden's Apple iCloud ID. When the FBI 
took possession of the device in December 2019, they notified the IRS that it likely contained evidence of tax crimes. Wow. So let's go into what evidence, right? This is exactly provided. This is word for word I'm about to read to you. For example, from Hunter Biden's iCloud account, according to Shapley, he stated, quote, We obtained a July 30th, 2017 WhatsApp message from Hunter Biden to Henry Zhao, where Hunter Biden wrote, quote, I am sitting here with my father, and we would like to understand why the commitment made has not been fulfilled. Tell the director that I would like to resolve this now before it gets out of hand, and now means tonight. And Z, if I get a call or text from anyone involved in this other than you, Zhang, or the chairman, I will make certain that between the man sitting next to me and every person he knows and my ability to forever hold a grudge, you will regret not following my direction. I am sitting here waiting for the call with my father. FYI, Hunter Biden's firm took nearly $5 million from this Chinese energy company within 10 days of this message. I mean, come on. Come on. If this was a Republican, you guys all know that. Like, laying out the facts here. This is just facts now coming. Because this this has not been uh, objected to. We have not heard... uh, any any counsel from Hunter Biden say otherwise? You have it right here in messages. This is the message. Shapley even testified to FBI questioning Rob Walker, who's a known close Biden associate. He was is a part of this questioning with the FBI. Shapley said, and with this is with Rob Walker, and the the questioner says, any times when he was in office, or did you hear Hunter Biden say that he was setting up a meeting with his dad with him while his dad was still in office? Walker answered yes. So you have testimony while Joe Biden was vice president of the United States. You have Hunter Biden setting up meetings, using his father as the crutch, his father being there to get this money for the family, including including Joe Biden. I mean, that's insane. And on top of it, on top of it, including the testimony were allegations that U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland lied to Congress. And that Hunter Biden's serious tax evasion years in 2014 and 2015, which are around the Burisma times that you've been hearing, were intentionally ignored to blow the statute of limitations, which gets Biden off scot-free. So in 2014, they, they blew the six-year statute of limitations, which would have exhausted in 2020. They could have filed charges according to Shapley's testimony, but they didn't. They intentionally blew it so that now they let Biden get off and evade these serious, egregious crimes of being a tax cheat and other, and frankly, this corruption as a whole. I mean, it's mind boggling to me. This is, this is, and this is scary now because now it comes down to there's a, there's a breakdown of trust that's occurring in the United States, which cannot continue. Okay. This cannot continue. I was with, for example, uh, Congressman James Comer is the chair of the oversight committee for the house of representatives and he's involved in these investigations with him last week. And he mentioned that depositions will be happening this summer, beginning with uh, Devin Archer on July 13th. But he also mentioned something very interesting, is that shortly after uh, Hunter Biden pled guilty to his BS misdemeanors, uh, he was paraded around at the Modi State Dinner like it was nothing. He was just out there, camera saw him, he was, he was with Garland, like he was just out there. And it was really scary because congressman said, it's a really interesting thought, is that this was meant to send a message to all those being deposed by the House of Representatives that we Bidens are untouchable. And therefore, if you want to open your mouth, it's going to be on you. And you're the only ones going to get hurt here because we are untouchable despite being pled guilty. No shame. Pure hubris. These guys think they can just be out there above the law, do whatever they want. That's a big, that's scary. That's scary to me on either side, whether it be Republican or Democrat, uh, no one's above the law, ever, ever. And for somebody like myself who I, I, I think integrity matters and I think we need that back and restored into our system as a whole because all this, you have questions about elections that are being brought up. You have questions now about your FBI, questions about the DOJ. You have questions about your... Uh, judiciary then and eventually this is where the, the unraveling of our democracy begins and that cannot stand and people like you and me 
we have to get out there. We have to have our voices heard. We have to make sure statements are made that we will not tolerate this on either side, in politics, in government, in our society as a whole. We will not allow this to prevail. And we have to ensure that we have people in government that have that integrity, common sense, dedicated to us as, our, as the, the will of the people being heard, that no matter who you are, that you will, we will make sure that if you violate the laws, if you uh, jeopardize this country for the benefit of yourself or others, other countries, uh, enemies within or without of this state, that you will come to an end. And that needs to be heard. And I think that statement needs to be sent more than ever uh, now. So with that, hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful July. I'll see you at the end of the month.